gentlemen, welcome to First Touch every Monday. We're a little bit behind this week because obviously you guys just got finished watching The Grid Overtime, but we are here now and it's going to be a good show. I'm Dazzling, your host. Joined with me is Roll Diz and T-Bates as per usual. Gentlemen, how we doing today? How we doing? I feel kind of saucy, you know, the sun's out. That means the gun's out, you know what I'm saying? What's up, T-Bates? How you doing over there? Um, see me. I'm just having a great time. I put on the glasses for y'all today. Switch it up a little bit, you know. Professor Professor Bates out here ready to give y'all all that great intellect I have for Rocket League. Oh, he's a professor today. He's a professor. Okay. We I mean, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna need to see it because we have a special guest coming on the show. He's gonna be with us for the whole show today. So something a little bit different for you guys. We're gonna introduce Slater Thomas, also known as Rettles, who will be joining us about right now. Again, Rettles to find that second touch, at least keeping the ball in that half, let alone get a goal. Yeah, the, the little things that you do, like keep boosting through a play. Ooh. It's just for the potential for disaster, and Rettles is an entire storm on the pitch. Rettles is in his final form. Check this man out. The flip reset gets. Yeah. I didn't hear I couldn't talk over it. I'm pretty sure I could talk over it, Tyler. Like, oh. he, yeah, like, let me let me do my work. You over here making all these things, throwing me off left or right. Oh, we were muted. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right, gas me one more time, Demar. Gas me one okay, more time. Okay, well, okay, we got Reynolds here. As I was saying while I was muted, he's one of the best players in NA. Uh, uh, he's a player on Space Station Gaming who just won the last North American Regional with a, a stunning, stunning performance there. But Reynolds, how are you doing today? I'm good, Damar. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad. I'm glad to be on the show. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Tyler, <laughs> you know what? I'm already. Uh, I'm sick of them already. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> we just started. And I'm already done. Um, but that being said, you know, welcome. What's good? Uh, how are you feeling coming off of the uh, the regional win? It's it's a good dub. Uh, it's it's been a while. It's no secret that we've been we've been in a little bit of a slump since uh, our fall major win in uh, October, but. It's it's good good to be back. Yeah, uh, I'm glad to have you here. I mean, roll this T Bates. How does it feel having Riddles on the show? Uh, Riddles is my ex teammate. You know, yeah, you know, man, you know. Place you know deep down inside, you know, dudes, we were on to come up together. So it's good to see Slater still at the top. That was know? us, man. That was us. Yeah, I've been I've been waiting for SSG to kind of make their return. Um, I think they were the initial machine before the machine was the machine, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the fall mm -hmm. split, but you know now they're back, so hopefully he keeps it like that. Slater, uh, I'm I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. Oh, I'm excited! I'm excited to have him on the show. You know, I like always like talking to people with big mouths, and Reynolds has one of the biggest mouths in Rocket League, so uh, -huh. uh <laughs> so it'll be fun. Oh, we got we got we got we got to question him up and see if he can see if all that talk he he can back up that talk. Oh, you know, man, you know me, and you know I always can. Okay, well, let's see. I mean, let's just get right into it. We'll talk about the North American Regional. As you guys know, the NA Spring Regional 2 was last weekend. And for a lot of teams, a lot of teams got to qualify for Worlds. But on top of that, uh, some teams are still fighting for those top few spots. So uh, I think we should probably, you know, just kind of get into it. Do we want to start at the beginning with the groups and kind of move out of it? Or do we want to talk about, I mean, to me, the biggest thing I, I got to say is the the seven game series between space station gaming and the machine because that was like first of all the machine going to the grand finals i think that was like a really big because we had so many questions about them going into you know the the weekend we were like well are they gonna be good are they you know da, 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 da. g2 adris uh, there's a lot of stuff but I, I guess let's start towards you know that that kind of grand finals uh how was it like for for you guys going up against envy uh we were a little gassed it was our first time in a while making it that deep into a tournament, and we weren't exactly prepared myself, especially. Um, I was very, very tired, massive headache. I was I was not very prepared for the finals, but thankfully my teammates picked up my slack for that last that, that last seven game series, and we we got the dub. Um, roll days. In terms of looking at the machine, did you expect them to actually like play that close against Space Station in the series? And I don't think I expected the machine in the finals. We've been talking about the machine recently. We say that they that they've been getting salvaged a little bit, you know, for their parts. You know, they're not really the machine anymore. We needed a mechanic to come here and repair them. But I, I think, you know, T base, he was set to be that mechanic. I think he kind of went in and did a little little something to that team because they looked on they looked on form, uh, beating G two. I did not expect them to. I did not expect to see either of these teams in the final, honestly, in all honesty. But 
um, I'm glad to see the two teams that previously in previous splits, we were looking at them as the top two teams, the most consistent two teams. So, I mean, they're back. So go ahead, base. Uh, for me, I mean, I picked Envy to win. So I ain't really like Envy. I'm on Envy. They could have won too. I mean, unfor unfortunate plays in a couple of those games, especially game four and game seven. That really didn't go their way. And SSG capitalized on them. And I'm sure Slater here is very happy about that. <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, my team. I expect I expect the machine to make it almost all the way. I told y'all I worked on them, worked on them last week. Y'all asked for a mechanic. I said I said I did a little fine tuning to them, and I, I mean, and oh then gosh. they went out perform. So I mean, it's just like another day in the office for me. Eventually, <laughs> there's, there's a there's a couple more tweets. Bring them back to the shop. Get my wrench out. Come screw them down a little bit better, and then come uh come next region. I mean, I think we all know what's gonna happen. The machine almost back. And I hope Slater and them boys understand that too, because uh, we'll be ready. Too. We'll be ready. We're always ready. So you think the machine need one more fine tuning before they start on the winning streak by by mechanic baits? Yeah, I'll probably that'll be good though. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know we saw Atomic is dead set on using that octane though. I think even yeah, the finish. I don't like, know, man. Like he he he's set on it because I think he, they used it the whole series. So he used it the whole series against you guys too. Um, something else though, uh, if we kind of peel back a little bit. The, the the playoffs. Seven out of eight of the, the top teams made it to Sunday. Made it to the playoffs on Sunday. Uh, you know, a lot of us talk about like depth in regions in, in North America, but I think that's still like a, a consistent thing. But I, again, I kind of want to get your thoughts on on the fact that we still have like seven of the top eight teams making it to Sunday. Uh, I think the only team that's not up there is what roll this. Yeah, yeah. Right. but like uh, you guys also made it top eight last nine. Regional. Yeah. yeah, we're nine, so like we're right. Who's the eight seed? Alpine. Alpine. And we all know Alpine ain't really no Alpine's top eight. Alpine's not a team. top eight team. Alpine's not a top ten team. So I talk to think, him. No, nah, that that team has so much talent, but they can't do anything with it. The eight teams I made are the eight best teams in NA right now. Easily. Oh, gosh. It it's true, man. Alpine got their points early. They they're all three are just so mechanically gifted individually, but they're young and experienced and they don't they don't know what to do with it. Yeah, you guys see the groups uh, on the screen. I probably went one, three in groups. The only win they got was to Scuba Squad. They had a close five game set against SSG and Rogue, but uh, it didn't seem like it. Just seemed like they only took no, they only took one and three, and then afterwards, like SSG didn't let them score a goal after game three. And then for Rogue, that was just all over the place. Like holy, like they had a, a, a game three where Alpine won eight to zero, and then. <laughs> And there was like two one goal game overtimes. It was just, I mean, I think that's just more on Rogue, just not doing well in groups personally. But yeah, Alpine then went to the lower round and it got 3 1 by Exit. So it does seem like they're they're really on the slump. So, I mean, but, but besides that, in terms of, you know, North America as a region, like as a whole, how do you guys feel about the fact that top eight teams are even, yeah, even if we like, you know, even slot world is in there, uh, top eight teams consistently making it to Sunday? We'll start with roll this and just go around. I think it just brings it brings that kind of like league play sort of solidified franchising. Like you will have consistent teams that you can root for that will make the top eight the important bracket every single time. And you can count on them to make it. They're not inconsistent rosters like you see sometimes in Europe where this one team will sneak into that top eight spot and you're just like, all right, will they be back? And then they're not back ever, right? And they just lump off the face of the earth. And at least in NA, you're at least going to have consistent rosters who will make it every time. There's for sure rosters where you're like, all right, I can root for them. I know they'll make it to Sunday, championship Sunday, and the games will be exciting because there are other teams that can compete against every team. I think every team has like their matchups and they struggle against certain teams and other teams are just harder to beat for for them but it just makes for exciting sundays yeah top eight na it's pretty there's not much competing with it uh obviously everyone's pretty close that number one spot no no one knows who's the best in north america right like rogue will win two tournaments and then they'll get eighth and then nrg will win two tournaments and then they'll just fall off the face of the earth but most of the time, the top teams are the top teams. There's no, there's no EU where Godsmill's team walks in, takes top four, and 
it disbands and three weeks later. That doesn't really happen much yeah. in NA because I mean it's it's true, right? Because I feel like in Europe you have that one good weekend. It, it's just all over the place in Europe. You never know who's gonna win, who's gonna make the playoff bracket, but North America is usually pretty consistent in that regard. Uh, dang it. No, no, I'm I'm good. I'm not I'm, there's no surprise for me. I've, I've, I've said it over and over again. NHS the more consistent team, just to go off of what Slater said. And um you just break it break it down from now. Really I mean not in a more consistent team, more consistent region in terms of top teams are always going to perform and they're, they're genuinely going to make the final brackets more often than the EU teams. EU teams have a greater chance. I don't know whether that's because EU slightly worse or, may, or maybe they just, or maybe those teams just really have a pop-up weekend at one time, but NA teams really don't disband, so whenever we'll we'll never really get a chance to see that. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, again... I think that, you know, you talk about North America, there's definitely teams that will have like standout days. For example, Xset, you know, they had a really good showing in groups. It looked like they almost were going to make playoffs until they, you know, got NRG in the lower bracket. But besides that, I mean, they like, what, where did they finish in groups? They finished third, but they had the same tie game differential with the uh, Sonics. The only difference was I think Sonics won the head to head. So Sonics were able to make it through there. But Besides that, uh, you know, you get some teams that will show up, but never to the point where, you know, the top, the teams at the top are really falling apart unless, you know, they're already doing bad. And I think we kind of saw that a little bit. I think the fact that XN and NRG went five games in that, like, lower bracket thing made me, who's someone who's, like, watch NRG a lot, like, uh, oh, they might not win this. And then it, it, it kind of definitely pulled into the next day. But, I mean, I'll, I'll try to break, down, break down, that down more a little bit later. Uh, next thing I want to get into is coach cams because there were we finally had coach cams added to tactical timeouts. I think we have a video of Chrome in the in the coach cam after you guys called a tactical timeout. I think when you guys were up in a series once, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, we got to see Chrome doing work. But I mean, I mean, talk to me about like what's going on through tactical timeouts for you, and then everybody else like let me know like how you guys feel about the coach cam being at it. So that tack was after game five of NRG, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, game five of NRG that we uh, won. But we were kind of not arguing, but had our differences on what, how we wanted to play defense in the rest of the series. Uh, NRG was giving us a lot of time and space in the midfield, and we weren't really used to that because we had just played a rogue who does not get off the ball. So we kind of took the timeout, not really to ice them, but we have we we're kind of just thinking we have two chances to win. Let's take this time out, take our time, talk through how we want to play, and make sure that we are winning at least one of these two last games. Um, and like since they showed Coach Chrome on there, Big Rob G, but uh, since they since they showed him on there, like how important is having a coach? Let the masses know about that because that's the first time they've really been able to see Chrome interacting with y'all on the mainstream specifically and in that intense moment. So like. Give, give us like a breakdown of how coaches really impact and like shape how y'all play and uh, help y'all grow. Good coaches. Yeah. I, 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 that emphasis. Coaches are, are still kind of a an interesting topic in Rocket League because there's coaches like Chrome who are like the traditional sports coach. Like they're going over replays, helping you get better, making sure your mental's intact, like just actual coaches. And then there's coaches that will not be named, but that are more just like managers and I have the coach title in North America and maybe in Europe as well. But Chrome is one of the best coaches in the game, and he he helps us a lot. Without Chrome, we're not getting some of these regional wins that we do. So he is a big part of our team's success. Yeah, I always look at Chrome super highly as a as a coach. I think even like when I decided to coach, I'm like, I, I looked at Co Coach Chrome, and I'm just like, I wonder what he's actually like doing in the comms. And you know, I tried to like look at um. I think I asked Co Chrome for some sort of advice, like before I even went into that that kind of way in my career. But um, he definitely gave me a lot of good tips, so I definitely could tell. Like, I mean, and you can tell, like Space Station, even when you guys were kind of falling off, um, a lot of it probably was just mentality and not sure how you really wanted to play the game. And he gets you right back on track, and it just shows. So it's great to see. Yeah, um, most of our failures, like, it's me sipping on Arsenal. You're not really going to get many individual errors uh, gameplay-wise. 
but we have i would say th- we are three of the strongest uh personalities in just in our comms in general Sypical has a very strict way of how he wants to play the game arsenal has a very strict way of how he wants to play the game and i kind of just whatever works whatever wins so for these last four months it was almost impossible to agree on a play style because we would go typical passive me and arsenal up it wouldn't work we would just get they would boom the ball over second man third man be alone we tried all three up it wouldn't work we'd get counterattacked. we tried maybe like five different play styles in the span of four months and we just couldn't get anything going and it was so hard because no no disrespect to my teammates at all but they they want to play how they've always played and it's it's not working anymore like fall split ssg it was slow play it, it's true it's true <laughs> fall split fall split uh, ssg was slow play methodical think everything take low 50s everywhere go as slow as you can it doesn't work anymore it, it we tried to make it work it doesn't work so mm. go go ahead teammates what, what you thinking over there i'm thinking a lot of things but 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 we have like a specific like question for that like before like you really break down into it i think it's on the mm. next segment yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go, we'll go more in SSG when we, we talk about the yeah, dubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before again, you get on your tangent. Uh, right. Again, uh, obviously, you know, Rettles is experienced, Coach Chrome, but for those of us watching, you know what I mean? Like, how how important is the coach camp being added to the tactical timeout in terms of your thing? Uh, like, in terms of, like, your viewing experience, or at least. Like, well, as you said it a little bit, uh, you wanted, you said that, you know, it was good to, like, see him, like, actually like in the work like talking because sometimes when we had player cams we you know some people were just sitting there just chilling yeah, sit there, yeah. And you're it's, like well, what, are, what are they talking about <laughs> yeah no facts facts i think a lot of spectators are just like all right they're, they're, they're giving up because you don't see anybody ever talking but for teams who do have coaches normally the coach is taking a lot of that air time and you get feedback from players because the coach coach doesn't really know as much as the players they know maybe um it's like the players know everything there is about the game, but the coach kind of like fine tunes it and like figures out how the players need to play in that in that moment because they can see the rest of the field and the players really don't have that time to focus on the other team's gameplay and their gameplay and their teammates' gameplay and everything else that's going on on the field. There's so much that's happening in that moment. So the the coach like in the timeout, you, you know, he takes that time, fine tunes it gives the player something super simple to think about mentality, brings them back up, whatever he needs to do in that moment. So to actually see it on the main stage, it brings a lot to the spectator's view. And you're just like, all right, there's someone else actually talking instead of like these players just hard tilting off the face of the planet, just not saying a word. Uh, yeah. I mean, did you have anything to add or were you pretty much? Yeah, that's what I felt. But yeah, I mean, Broad has explained it pretty perfectly. Uh, I think a lot of us were like looking for that because again, you saw a lot of people just kind of sitting there chilling. You're like wondering like, okay, what do they talk about? Or like, what are they talking about? So uh, it is a good thing that we have, um, we have uh, the coach cam uh, in terms of, I'm trying to make sure before we move off of this, if we didn't miss anything crazy in terms of like things that kind of happened over the course of the regional Besides, I think Stromboli doing really well in groups was crazy because you have version one in there. Uh, version one also losing to RBG. RBG Honestly, performance. Yeah, I thought our RBG actually did really good. That was Stokely, Money, and Mile. And we mm. usually never see like teams like that get like out of groups at all. And then, of course, like Stromboli. Um, what do you guys think? Like, in terms of like, you know, because these are like the bubble teams that will get the upsets. Uh, do, do these performances kind of stand out or are you guys like trying to see like a little bit more consistency? For me, um, I got I got to actually favorite. because I I consider myself pretty, pretty close with Stokely and, and pretty close with money as well. But Mile, that dude has talent. He that kid's going to kid, but he he's going to be at the top eventually. He he's a grinder. He plays a lot. He was the G2 sub for that fusion tournament, but I, I think he's someone everyone should be keeping an eye on. He, he has a lot of talent. He can be con- inconsistent at times. He can definitely be uh, pointed at for some of his team's losses, but he he's going to make it. Raul? Um, I'm looking at, like, Stromboli as a roster who's, like, they have players that have all had, like, past experience on bubble teams right and now it's just like a mesh of them and they're combined and now they're actually like 
performing they're having a great great group stage at least you know they made it to the knockout gauntlet they didn't really make it anywhere after that because they had to play two tough teams they, they g2 followed by rogue so it's not it's not a it's a tall task to ask for but they they look on the up and up and rbg rbg you, you look at mile you look at money and you look at Pauly, uh, Stokely, all, all three of those players have been around for a minute now. Um, I'm, I think money is the guy that you haven't seen as much of before prior to now. And even money looks like he's stepping up into his way and finding a great uh, kind of backbone around him. Mile finding a great backbone around him. Uh, I think T-Bates mentioned it off, off stream, though, earlier before we were even live that Stokely is a team player. Like w we had T-Bates warm me up. Uh, Sunday, right before we play G2. And and how'd that go for you? Oh, but boy. chill out, chill out. You don't gotta mention oh, that. Oh, it's, a it's a warm-up for a reason. I right? you don't gotta mention that. But he was talking about day. he was talking about Stokely and he said Stokely was he's a team player, you know. So he was he was super easy to play well, or he's super easy to play with. So I mean, just adding mile and money, mile being somebody that you can't predict what he's gonna do. He's one of those type of players. The mechanics is all there. Um, just adding Stokely to that roster, someone easy to play well with it, it just meshes well together and it's great to see these guys having some promise having some light on that roster so i can't wait to see what they do in the future looking at their roster i'm, I'm, I'm good with it y'all basically covered everything but okay. you got nothing to say base it's a little quiet man. today it's usually got the Jeez, most to say thanks. he's quiet today but we'll, 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 we'll keep going. We'll keep going. So we're going to move on to our next topic, which is SSG. Uh, obviously, you know, we talked about it. We mentioned it a little bit with uh, Space Station Gaming beating MV43 in the regional grand final. We, uh, I guess, obviously, you know, we said how the, the kind of series went. But do you think for, for you, Rettles, kind of looking back into it, uh, was there... Was there a turning point for you guys in the series? It was pretty solid. Obviously, you know, MV ended up, like pushing it into like a game seven after one's on wasteland in neo tokyo um but for you in terms of like if we break it down kind of game by game how did it feel being in there going into the series we were we were super confident uh this was probably the best i've played in rlcs x so far individually and arsenal and typical definitely weren't slouching either it was good from all three of us individually and team wise i mean some of the passes we had i know you guys saw the passing play against nrg and it was really good so going into the series we were like all right this is a team we've beat before this team we've lost to before they're not playing the best they've played uh mist is not playing the game at all he's not grinding this is a team that we expect to beat pretty easily but game five it was after we were up 3-1 we missed some key chances it was there were some shots where I hope T-Bates hits those. It, it was it was rough. But so they took game five and six and we're loading into game seven. I'm like, all right, look, we're better than this team. All three of us are playing better than all three of them. There's no reason we should be losing the series. Get your head out of something I can't say on first touch and let's win this game. And it was really just as simple as that. I mean, oh, we were God. the better team for that game seven. They had some chances at the end, but it was just good play from all of us. Were you nervous when when uh, Turbo Posa and this clip starts going for his air dribble? The air dribble bump was was a little nervous because... Uh, I see, I see. I see. Go ahead. The comms video will be out soon, but typical challenged as second man and like started like screeching almost. Like he was like, oh, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up. And so when Arsenal got bumped, I knew I could put it back wall, but I had no chance of getting that next save. So thankfully, Sip rotating the back wall puts it perfectly on Arsenal's car, who has a perfect shot. It was a pixel perfect play, but it was... It was close. It was pretty close there at the end. And, and what about that hype y'all had? Like, I see T-Shot over there screaming. Sip got his face all in the camera, smiling, and always looking up at it. <laughs> and then uh, you, you just vibing with it, too. You get really going off that energy. So Yeah. I mean, this uh this tournament meant a lot to us. It's been like I said earlier, it's been a while since we've since we've made it this far into a tournament. But it's something that we expect to start happening again. We're not gonna let our foot off the gas. And it was just the best feeling being back at the top. Okay. Okay. So I got a question for you. Mm hmm Over on Saturday, you said that with y'all's play style, y'all are a top three team in the world. And then y'all ended up winning. Mm-hmm. This weekend, so are you are you you like are you sticking with that top three in the world? Or are you gonna move yourself to top one in a or like so? How, how are we going with that? Like 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 let us all know, cop. I mean like 
Cause we all know you can talk. And I, we need to know right now. Okay, you can still be top three, top three world. Like, does that mean there's two top two teams in A with BDS? Does that mean there's no top three? There's nobody in the EU that's top three world. Let us all know. You gotta elaborate on that statement. Last time I called us the best in the world, we got ninth through twelfth in the in the next regional. <laughs> so uh, uh, definitely not gonna go down that route. But wise, I do feel like this is the best we've ever played, and I do feel like if we continue to play like this, we will be the best team in the world come worlds. Come world. So you got a little bit more work to do. Come worlds. Yeah. Month and a half, two months. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Y'all can y'all can ask them if y'all got something. I don't really got much to add to that. Yeah, okay. I mean, nah. Like, uh, I think we all know kind of just, uh, it's, it's one of those things I got to see it. You know what I mean? We got we all got to see it. That's, that's really all that there is to it. But uh, I was really impressed with the interview that you guys had before that series where, you know, it was the one where you're talking about, you know, we want to be the best. We're tied against second, third. You know, that type of mentality is always very important. A lot of people will question team mentalities going into it, especially because I know there are some teams that are okay with getting like second or third or top four or whatever. But I think it's much more, you know, uh, refreshing to see like some players actually, you know, really want to win it all. Everyone makes excuses all the time, but uh, actually going into it and like, you know, trying to play the best that you can is like super important. But And I want to go back to your play style comment earlier you're doing because you said y'all changed up the play style and there's various ones and some just weren't working the slow play think about everything so if you want to you don't have to talk about your new play style on stream you don't have to let other teams know how you play but you could but if you want to elaborate on it let the let the world know how ssg is changing up to the point where they just beat the machine for three go ahead the floor is yours i i won't go into into too much death i mean there it's not really a secret if you watch vods or uh analyze replays you'll figure it out pretty easily but it's kind of we've gone from letting teams run all over us and sitting in net counter attacking like we did in fall to controlling the field like we are going to play our game if you don't play our game you're going to lose we're going to make teams play how we want them to play okay Yeesh. okay okay you're gonna make them okay 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 so this one let all y'all know just go back into the archives, go watch SSG game plan. You'll be able to figure out the play style. That's how you figure it out, guys. It's all in the replays. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. MVG2 NRG, go back and watch the replays because apparently it's that easy to figure it out. They're going to make you play. They're going to make you play just like they want to. That's the confidence we like to hear on first touch. Okay, I just wanted to let you know, Zorado. I told you, you're on hot seat now, baby. And I ain't going to let you get out of here quick. Oh, gosh. Well, speaking speaking of teams on the hot seat, we got to put another team on the hot seat. The machine, as the machine had a good run, but they still couldn't close out the regional win. R win, I'm sorry. So, looking at the machine, I mean, are we the the question proposes? Will we ever see the machine again? I'm starting with Bates. See, what, the quotations around the machine. There's a reason they they were called dub the machine because they literally ran through the entirety of NA for a whole month and a half. And see, people don't think that's gonna happen again. And see, like Redis is on the stream right now. He's saying that by worlds, they might be the, they're gonna be the best team in the world. See, I'm gonna pump the brakes on that. I'm gonna pump the brakes because as good as SSG played, and I gotta give that boy Redos Redos his props for his flipper set for SSG's five man passing play. That might have been the greatest passing play in RLCS history. But at the same time, we did see Turbo Posa on Champions Field. Like what? Like uh, who's on stream? Is that Way Punk on stream? I think it was Way Punk and Chief who was on stream saying Turbo on Champions Field. You don't want to see what well, Turbo on goal. Turbo ain't going to own goal game seven again. Nah, Reynolds. You ain't going to be able to rely on that. And if you can't rely on that, it might be talking about a new different champion. That's all I'm saying. And and, and Envy just got to do a couple more tweaks. Uh, uh, Tommy was on the Octane. He was kind of balling out. So I might back away on my Fanny Talk for now. But if we ever see the machine, I think I think come major, we're going to be talking about a machine in full motion, full throttle, ready for Worlds. Uh, eh. Yeah. Turbo Turbo is known. <laughs> Turbo is notorious for being the best player online. Obvious. It's no secret. And Mist as well. Mist was a great player online. I teamed with him. We went to multiple lands together. We won one. He is also a great land player. Atomic. Nah, man. He he is way too unproven. It's the it's the mechanical players that can't bring it to land. It. I'm sorry. It's Justin is one of maybe the only mechanical player who's ever shown that he can do it online as well. And no, no disrespect to atomic. He might be able to do it, but we saw him in Montreal. It, it wasn't anything good to see. Uh, however, 
I do think Envy will be our biggest competitor on land. I don't see NRG doing all that much with Squishy in the roster. I think he's holding them back a little bit. I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, let, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me keep talking. Let me keep talking. I think Garrett is a great player. I think Justin's a great player. I think Squishy's a great player, but I think Squishy is a little stuck behind in the meta. Uh, uh -oh. He. It's. When you play against it, it's kind of. I mean, you guys saw it yesterday. It wasn't a secret. He didn't play his greatest, but I think Envy is going to be the team to beat on land for us. I think when Miss plays the game, he's one of the best players in the world. I think Turbo is the best player in the world on land. And Atomic could prove me wrong. And he is, when he's in the Fennec, man, there, there's no stopping him in the Fennec, but we'll, we'll see. Nah, he, he's on a mission to prove you're wrong about that Fennec, man. Nah. And he's playing on Octane. He's definitely the Fennec, man. I want to question you on your own, your own teammate. Didn't What's Arsenal up? hit a musty on land? Bro, yeah, my, yeah. my team's different on land. What do you mean? Right, about, I, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to come back to that, too. Said, Go ahead, he said bro. Justin's the only mechanical player. Astro, you, got, you got teammates. Bro, they, were, they, were, they were winning. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu Yu-Gi-Oh had the mechanics back in the day. Astro, Astro in season eight had the mechanics. Wait, wait, Scrub Killer? Would the Scrub have no mechanics? Was Scrub not mechanical? Yu-Gi-Oh had the mechanics back in the day when he first hit land, man. You can't not captain me, Aiden. I don't consider a musty flick when they're up four to zero in the last game with five seconds left that mechanical. I mean, I'm sorry. I think T Bates can do that. I I don't think that's anything. I don't think that's anything. Why you keep saying T Bates like I'm just terrible? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Pause it right I'm now. just saying if T Bates can do it, anyone can do it, right? Thanks. Dang, Demar, you hitting it? Demar's what? hitting that musty flick. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't worry about nothing. Oh no. Hello. Okay. Well, we talk about. He said, "Bro, I brought up Arsenal. You brought up Yukio." Nah, I I, I can't you? believe that. What's up with you? I'm talking dude? about Yukio back when he first made land back in like season six or something. I don't know how long ago that was. Season seven. Yeah, years. mechanics back then. That's a long time. When did ago, Dig bro. win that dream hack? Who did they have? I don't. That know. was Turbo. It, it was Yukio. I think it was Turbo Scrub. Did... You no, I Dig? have no clue. No, nah. that was so long ago. VP... Yukio, Astro, and VP literally won EU season nine last. Not a land now. Yeah, I'm talking about. I think they won a dream hack. Yeah, it was with Turbo. Turbo, Panda, Yukio. Yeah. Leipzig. Leipzig. 2019, I think. Yukio Mechanics. Don't come on now. I know what I'm talking yeah. about. But that's so long ago, though. I, I, yeah. He was just saying the history, though. I did, it don't matter now. I'm just that's saying, like, I'll just give him historical. I'll just, I'll just give him some historical reference points to the his statement that he made. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Well, I mean, the 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 biggest thing to kind of rope us back into what we, what we were talking about is like mainly just like the machine, you know, we got like that land, that land presence. That's something that we need to see. That's something, you know, we absolutely need to see. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, it turned, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but uh, any any other teams to look out for uh, in, in the NA region? I mean, I just highlighted some bubble teams earlier, but there's still, I mean, even teams that are outside the top eight, like. What's what's one team that a lot of people probably aren't like looking at right now that might be really good? Mm, I don't think anyone in North America is getting underrated right now. I think NRG will be solid. I think Envy will be really good. I think we'll be really good. I think Rogue is extremely unproven. That team is a mystery on land. Who knows what they're going to do? I think G2 is going to be solid with Dries or Rizzo, whoever they end up playing with. And then that six bot phase, KCP, G2, whoever gets it. But Europe, I actually like Team Queso a lot. I've been watching a little bit. I've been I've been watching my replays, been doing my research. That team could be interesting. They kind of play that North American style of play, that pretty, pretty fast, um, fast paced demo, kind of a little heavy. That team is interesting. I think they could do some damage. I really do. I, I, I can see that. I can see that for Queso. What are y'all thinking? Oh, I, uh, uh, EU. I mean, I'm gonna touch on EU later. But NA, nope, nobody really from NA that uh, like Slater said, everybody in NA is pretty well respected and what what they're known for. That's what they can do. There's nobody that's gonna jump out and surprise you, in my opinion. You don't think EXO will? No. No. Not, not even after groups. Not even no. after knockout. No. 
No, no, why not? no, nope, and nope. Why, why, why not, not, not? <laughs> They're just not on that level. What, what level are you talking about? I mean, the I mean, level worlds? that... You're talking I mean, about world's level? There's no, no nowhere no near. World, no, right? they're not going to make a world. world. I'm just talking about like, talking about like a top 10 in A. They're not top 10 in A. Maybe 10. Maybe. I, I could see them at 10. Maybe 10. That's the highest they're going. I think they're improving, though. Yeah. Like, they're, you, they're can't, you can't, you can't, you can't right. sit here and tell me that they're not improving. I like their system a lot. I don't think individually they're that crazy, but their system's really good. I like it a lot. Yeah, I mean, like right now in rankings for the this just the split, they're sitting at ten in the rankings. Tied with Charlotte Phoenix, version one's over them by like twenty points. Um, so they could make the major, but yeah, no, I don't think I'm not saying like oh we should watch out for X like, so they're gonna just come through and like it's probably actually almost like mathematically impossible. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not I'm not saying that at all, but uh, okay, well, huh. I think right now like if. It, it, Exit's a team that, like, if you go into them, underestimating them, they'll slap you in the in the mouth. That, I agree. That, that's one hundred percent of team like that. Another team is uh, V one. I don't even think they're. I think they're exactly where teams expect them to be. Where in in that case, what I mean by that is like, no one underestimates V one anymore. They know V one will come and they'll show up and and you have to play your game or V one will again slap you in the mouth. There's other teams that you just. You can go up against and you're just like um you don't underestimate them but you know that if you just play your game even if you're not on point you should take the series um but v1 x set i mean even rbg me playing against rbg i could tell that team there there are a couple like replays away from from starting to step into that that uh rhythm um, oh yeah no because like that's what i wanted to mm. I don't know if I should do this now or later. Because uh, I want to talk about Stromboli. Because if you think about it, Stromboli, they, this is like former Charlotte Phoenix plus Kensei who got kicked off a of PK. Uh, mm, honestly, I'll wait till later. I'll wait till later. Because I do want to talk about Stromboli, but I think it's a better time. Uh, let's move on to G2 or Go2, as uh, T-Base usually calls it. G2 had a pretty good regional run. Well, it was their first regional with Drees. They ended up making it to the semifinals and played against Team Envy, and then they dropped out there once they uh, you know, played with the machine. But let's uh, let's talk about G2's performance with Drees. What, were, what was the room's thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, how did he look? How did he look? I think... Drees looked really good, actually. I think out of the pro scene, I am probably his biggest hater. Uh, I didn't believe in him at all. Uh, I played a bunch of rank twos and rank X and Astro against him, and I, ju I didn't see it. Uh, Mist was actually the one hi who hyped him up enough to be on that, that G2 sub spot. Mist and Illusion. Super. I didn't. I'd su oh, it was unbelievably. Unbelievable amount. Yeah, it was crazy. And I didn't believe at all, but I think. Chicago and JNAPs are one of the best duos in the game right now. And I think that Drees slash Rizzo role, they don't need him to do much, but he's playing it really well. That's right. I completely agree. With, I echo your sentiments 100%. Uh, I mean, the, the kid came out, he, be, he playing, he's playing his role perfectly. He's got, I would say, like a top three duo in Chicago and JNAPs in the world, probably behind like uh, Ahmad and Khalid and stuff like that. <laughs> God, <laughs> man. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and like, but um, yeah, just, just to really, just to really like harp in on that, he just, he's got a roll, keep the ball in front of him, play third man. When when you see Chicago in the ball move out the way, when you and I don't know if anybody noticed, whenever Jay knocks with Chicago middle, Drees gives him the ball, and Jay he just moves, and that's what he's supposed to do, and he's doing it pretty well. He's got, I think, his best series of the weekend was groups, I believe, on uh, that Friday against NRG when they beat NRG when Justin. Had the zero second shot, he played really solid defense, and it, uh, that's all G2 needs him to do. And he's performing admirably, and you got to give the kids some credit. Now, I got a lot of people that are kind of hinting that it's just a honeymoon phase right now. But me looking at that gameplay, I think Dree's just, uh, we talked about it previous on previous episodes where we were like, what does G2 need when the when the Rizzo rumors came out? And T Base was a big, big advocate for having Rizzo stay on the team. And he said that there's no change that was needed. And maybe there isn't because they placed the same. It was still a top four finish. Even with Rizzo, they placed top four. Um, but I think Drees plays differently on this roster. It's easy to tell that he plays differently. He is a hard-stuck third man. He is a 
traditional third man role where he comes into the play when he's needed to retain possession. He buys time for J Naps in Chicago to find the boost. And if J Naps in Chicago are um, in that midfield, he gets them the ball, obviously. And even, even sometimes Dries is doing plays by himself. He's, he's finding, he has that boost that a third man typically normally has because he's sitting in the backfield waiting to come up into the play, retain possession. And he's making something out of it. He's making the most out of it. And I think a lot of people just didn't expect him to do anything. And since he's just, he's like, he's comfortable in that rotation when he has the top, a top three duo on the field with him. He's just comfortable and confident. They give him that confidence to do whatever he needs to do. And when he makes one, two plays in the beginning series, in the first couple of series of the, of the weekend, then, then that carries his confidence throughout the whole thing. And he, he's just not, he's not scared to do anything anymore. So. Yeah, it's really exciting to see Dree step, in, step into his way. And sheesh, hope to see this this roster, you know, improve on the up and up as they continue. Yeah, I think that's really important too, you know, watching this roster over time because you talk about people's, you know, saying the whole honeymoon, honey moon rumor uh, or whatever when you talk about the team performance. But, I mean, you guys see the question at the bottom of the screen right now. Uh, Rhoda's kind of touched it on a little bit, but I want to hear from Bates and, and Rettles. How much better is G2 with Drees than he is with Rizzo or than they were with Rizzo? Ah, that's a good one. Yeah. So, what, you want to go You want to go first, Rettles? Yeah, I got it because that, I mean, it's a little early to tell, right? I'll, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be the devil's advocate on this one at least because it's a regional – uh, G2 was the best team in the world season nine. They were unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Can they get to that level with Drees? Mm, probably not. Probably not. On it, we don't know, but I don't see it. Um, I think once that team, once this season ends after Worlds, if that team picks up a third, I don't think any pro would disagree with me that that team is going to be a top two team. That team is going to be crazy with, I mean, completely hypothetical. Imagine Chicago Atomic. JNAP, Chicago, First Killer, JNAP, Chicago, Garrett, JNAP. Like, imagine any of those teams. So that he, team is crazy. So you're disregarding Drees, period. So you're saying Drees is a substitute. I think Drees is out after this season. Sheesh. So I think he's good. I think this is good experience for him. That's right. I don't think he can ask for more. I that's think right. he's getting his name out there. That's right. Everyone who is around, like, Grid, like, Oxygen, Charlotte, like, those teams, they're seeing him. They're like, okay, this is someone that we need to look out for next season. I think it's a win-win for both teams. I think JNAPS is playing how he wants to play. He looks happy. If you see his webcam during Smile. a series, he's smiling. I <laughs> haven't seen that. He <laughs> looks like he's playing the way he wants to play. So I don't. So why I don't would see they? It as why would they thing. replace somebody who's making him play like he wants to play? You know what I'm saying? Nick, I, I don't because think they're not, they're not isn't the as individually talented as a player they could get. I but think doesn't he have room to grow? Dries has a lot of room to grow, but why wow, give someone a chance with room to grow when you can pick up one of the best players in the world because they know how good you are as a duo? I think the biggest test will be Worlds, right? Let's say G2 makes Worlds. Uh, Dries, in that setting, that will make or break anything. Like, if he does good at Worlds and G2 has a good Worlds run, then they'll probably keep him. But if he doesn't and then they drop out early, then they'll look for someone else. That's a lot of pressure to put on somebody, though, especially Dries. He's 15. It's like his first time in RLCS, and he's going to Worlds and playing. Like, I don't you know. What? I don't think it just falls on Worlds. I think it does. I don't see why not. Why would it not? I think it does. It, 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 it's it's going to be a culmination of various factors. They could ball out in Worlds and even win it, and he could still get replaced. No I, chance. I just don't no, think that zero chance. 100% chance. He's a 15-year-old kid with crazy potential. But like, time on, time on, time on. They could, they could win Worlds because Chicago is averaging 500, and Jane Abbs is averaging 455, and injuries is getting you 250. If it's not broken, why fix it? Right. Like, I mean... I mean, that's like or, saying the Warriors went seventy three and nine, and they nine times out of ten win that finals, and they but they lost. But no, but they're saying if they would have won, but they lost. They, they lost. Yeah. That was the most. That was the biggest fluke of all time, and <laughs> and they, they would have added Kate regardless. So so it's like they couldn't. It's not it's, just because you win doesn't mean you don't go back into the tool shop and improve. If you win, no, time out, time out, time out, time out. So you're telling me that if G2 has the off, the, G2 wins worlds hypothetically, and right? they, they, they have a first killer atomic on the board, they're not going to pick them up. Really? Hey, realistically speaking, though, really? Like, how, how, how realistic is that to happen? What? Honestly. For them to win worlds or for them to have no, atomic? For them to get a first killer, killer or atomic, atomic bro. How realistic? It's, it's really not uh, that you know, realistic. You need a, a torment. They just won worlds. Why would they pick up some of them from V1? 
<laughs> you don't pick up Torment if you win a world with Dries. Nah, man, love, we, we, love we, the torment, but we we we, yeah. we, 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 we disagree on all of it. It's all good to me personally. I mean, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna ruin my G two no matter what. You know what? You know what? The last team that I knew that went to Worlds and planned on like kicking someone at Worlds, I think it was like Triple Trouble, and that's not even an org anymore. <laughs> like that's like that. You just don't do that. <laughs> it's called a free agency. We had Drees. You won a world championship. You go do your own thing. We pick up somebody else. I'm, I'm, I'm not even saying they'll do that. I'm just, I'm just playing like that was advocate. There's a world where that can happen. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Saying, saying that world happens, right? What roster? I think I don't think. Wait, time, time, okay. Actually, no. Before you go, before you go, I just want to give you this question before you go. And also, say they do win worlds. What's Drees' stock then? That's what I'm saying. No, that's what I was just about to go. Oh, okay. I was just about to go there. They win Worlds. Dries is not going to a Charlotte. He's not going to an Alpine. Where would he go? He, bro, I feel like his stock would his stock or, is definitely higher H. than. If would you Worlds? Yeah, really? he wins Worlds. Yes, this is an international and he's 15. tournament. I think Dries goes to wherever the player G two picks up. So say G two picks up Atomic. I think Dries goes to Envy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Be a split flop. Okay. I can see that. Okay. That'd, that'd be the only way I see it to where it makes sense. See, too. Like, even if like they did that, like they decided to do that, like just, that swap would be. But I just don't think that could work at, at the same time. What? Like, the you, swap? You look at it. Like, yeah. Like, like look at atomic injuries. They two different. I don't think it works either. Like, it doesn't work. Wait, you're talking. Oh, you're talking about for. You're talking about for G two. No, any both both rosters is gonna be hard to fit. No, that. I didn't Atomic say. I... whatever he wants and like. You fitting in J Naps in Chicago, who you the best duo you guys are proclaiming, right? One of the best duos. Yeah, and you let the duo Atomic's work. in there doing whatever he wants. Okay, then... I just said Atomic. I'm just saying if Atomic's on the board. The best I'll, fit I'll... is Nick. It's gotta be missed. Oh, missed? Best fit has to be missed. Yeah, it has to be Play style wise, mentally, absolutely not. G2 <laughs> oh, is the most yeah. mature. <laughs> <laughs> G2, G2 is the most mature team. Missed is the most immature pro. It, it doesn't Woo! work. But Gameplay wise, Mist is the perfect fit for G2. He's Dries, but does everything better. He's Dries, but top three in the world. Oh my gosh, that's a, that's a dangerous combination. <laughs> Around a there. Combination. That's, a dangerous that's, a G, that's a G2 dynasty right there. Woo! I mean, Dries <laughs> might be the dynasty too. So all, all I'm saying is, I wish to get nothing but best, and I'm proud of him. Got a lot of people hating on him. And they, uh, that's true. A lot of Dries. people hating on him, man. And it, it's hard to fill in original shoots, especially being on G2, and you're unknown, and you really come out and you're still performing. Like, they getting the results, grid and in regional. So you got. I don't think I could have done that well. Coming in 15 years old, like all that pressure. I, I don't think I could have done that well. I'll be honest. He's he's proven me wrong. That's right. That's right. So I mean, you gotta give him nothing but love for that, man. Well, I know we yeah. all respect him. Up Jeez, it's time to work now, Drees. You watching this? It's time to work, bro. Don't stop. World this soon. Start. This is the start. Uh, right. well, well, we'll see how go to go with uh Dries on the team right now. It's looking good, but of course, you know, we love to see the consistency. Moving on to a team that is probably the most inconsistent team ever. We're gonna talk about Pittsburgh Knights here a little bit. Uh, well, I guess they've been consistent recently, consistently not doing well uh, as they have been failing. They failed to make it out of groups, they went 0 4 in groups, they lost to RBG in five. They lost to G2 3 1. NRG swept them. It was like a highlight reel. I was there. I mean, they all, like, it was what? Game 1 1 0, game 2 5 0, game 3 8 4. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just not looking good. And then on top of that, there are rumors around the scene that they're going to uh, like someone's maybe getting benched soon. So, well, yeah, we got to talk about it. Like, what, what, what's going on with PK? Uh, yeah, mentality, chemistry, and, uh, everything. everything, game yeah. style, Confidence. play style, com actually everything. That team is so terrified of the ball. You you would assume a pro team would want the ball. No, that team hides in that. They are so scared of, I guess, failure. I'm not sure. Sosa, I love the kid. He he's one of my favorite pros. I want the best career for him. He plays for his stats and. I, I honestly hope he's not watching this because I, I know how much he cares about this kind of stuff, but he's such a good player, but he he doesn't play like he wants to win. He plays like he wants to impress people with his stats. So you're saying he's a number chaser. 
Yeah. Plays like T Bates. Tell mm-hmm. about T Bates win too though. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I get my numbers and I get the dope here. You better run relax with all that. Well, what what happened this weekend, T Bates? Hold on. Wait. <laughs> what happened this weekend? What do you mean what happened this weekend? Didn't you have to sub in at one point? Time out. That's Superman out the shower. I got the text message saying I need to get on and I was down on one search. You need to relax. You need to relax. <laughs> okay, that's that's a good good way to turn it around. Hold on, bro. Okay, okay, okay. Disregard. Disregard. We're talking about Sosa. We're talking yeah, about Yeah, we are not talking about T Bates. Let's go yeah, back to Sosa. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, you you brought yourself into the conversation. You said I brought him into the conversation. That was the bar, man. I don't talk about that. Oh, that was the You say play first stuff to say play like T base. That's all. Wait, more 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 word to Sosa. He that he's gonna be one of the best players in the world eventually. He needs work. No, no, T Bates. He's got the talent. He's got the mentality. I actually I love his attitude out out of the game. He he has grind. That he was actually. One of the players Chrome considered for that AXB spot back when I got it. If I couldn't go to SSG, Sosa was one of the players he uh, he was kind of recruiting out. So he gets a lot of love around the scene. He he'll he'll find his way back. I can I can back up Sosa's mental. His mental is strong. It's one of the strongest mentals I think you'll see in a player where he cares so much. He cares so much. But right. um to to bounce off of what Slater was saying, saying that he based his whole gameplay is a kind of like he cares too much about his stat stat line. Um, is is that like could that be a product of what's happening on his roster, or is that yes. just what yes. how he always plays? He when PK was going through their spurt of like disputed like top eight, like it, it was they were considered a top eight team. He was an animal. Zombie was their main kind of go for the ball, force out challenges, demo, mechanical. Sosa scored everything. He was a gross player. And I think it's a confidence thing. I think he doesn't really believe in his teammates much anymore. It's no secret Zombie's not playing the game much. And Rodoko was never really up to the level that Sosa wanted in the first place. But Sosa will be back. He He's a great player. It's just a confidence thing. Okay. So Sosa's going to be fine. Sosa will be fine. Rodoko and ZPS, oh. on the other hand, they ain't gonna be. They fine. will not be fine. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, What's up with him? What's up with him? Zombie, so much potential in one player. I, it's, it's crazy. He it's sad. No, I, I, Vrold is, Vrold has had sad. some experience with Zombie as well before this, uh, this RLCS season. But he could be so good. He just doesn't care. It's so sad to see. There's so many players like that too. They just. They could be great. They don't want to put in the work. Rodoko, he's always been fundamentally super sound, but I don't know if that's the play style that they, the play style they're playing right now, I don't think it works for him. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. So, so essentially what you're saying is PK, PK might as well, they're just done for the rest of, rest of the regional. It's chalked. They just got to move on. I think they need a lot of work. I think they could fix it. If but they're all young, I think all three of them are 16, 17, 16, maybe. And I, obviously, it's not much older than me, but I've been in the scene for a long time. And that team needs to kind of get out, stop the ego, and just sit down and be like, hey, we're awful right now. We need to fix this. We need to fix this. We might need to change our whole play style, but something needs to change. Yeah, and that's where I really want to get on to uh, mentality. Like, uh, we're going to talk about how important it is mentality to a team's success. And I think this is something where if you look at PK over the course of all of the the regionals, uh, uh, you just watch them play and you look at their Twitters, you look at the fact that, you know, their coach streams often and quite literally has in the stream titles who don't want to talk about what happened today on the stream. You know, like uh, the fact that when they lose, it's about th- three or four different responses. I believe what Sosa is just like, ah, I'm frustrated. Like, I can't take this anymore. Uh, ZPS is like smiley face or woo woo or something that I can't say. Uh, it, it's just so the it's so polarizing how, you know, and, and the fact that it's public, too, is probably, I think, the, the worst part about it. But um, for for just to kind of pull out you know, what we see here, I think that's why we have to transition into that. Like, so how important to you all is mentality to a team success? It's the most important thing in the game. That's right. Like it's, it's that and skill, the two most important mentality, a great team can win. Like, ugh, it's, 
Season nine Sonics. That team, it wasn't. So it wait. wasn't a secret that they weren't great mechanically or individually even. So good as a team and so good mentally, so strong mentally because they're all older, mature people. They they were great, and it wasn't because of individual solo plays. You'll see Justin or Arsenal or Astral. It was just because they had a system, they believed in it, and they believed in each other. All right, so I got a question for you since you said that. Yep. So I'm gonna outline two teams. You got a good team. You got a good team mechanically speaking, but they have great mentality, and you have a great team mechanically speaking, but an okay mentality. Who's going to, you're saying the first team's going to go farther? Yes. Okay, okay. And that's just because, like, energy's going to stay the same or it's going to get even better throughout. Uh, the comms going to be great. The, the chemistry amongst each other and then, like, just the overall team environment is going to be a healthy environment for them su- to succeed. Would you say that? Right. I think the second team might have a higher peak. I think they might win a tournament, go far in a tournament. First team will always be better overall. Okay, okay. I completely agree. Mentality is everything. I don't think I it is it, it was exemplified. I believe on the stream just this just weekend when you saw SSG playing. Whenever SSG had something going on, even when it was going bad, you could still see him talking. You could still see the energy when something went right. And I don't I, and I'm not like in the RCS like that to really get used to that. But for me, if I wasn't if if I was in there, uh, in terms of just like after you make a goal, it should be like nothing but hype, energy. Everybody should be screaming and stuff. T Shop throwing his head up and down. And when y'all have the passing play, all y'all are smiling and laughing. Like it's just that type of energy that you need to really succeed. And mm-hmm. I want to parallel it with NRG's energy over the weekend, who we all believe are a really great team. You go back and watch the tape. NRG, there are sometimes when they score something, J- Justin in particular, he just looked. Looks like he didn't want to be there. Like, like he didn't want to be there. And, and and that doesn't help a team uh, a team's environment that really doesn't get y'all going, especially when y'all are in tight series that for thousands of money, thousands of dollars of money, and it's also for world points and just for prestige in general. You want to be the best, so you want to have the energy to be the best. And I, I think a lot of teams and a lot of these young players coming up, and even the players in the scene right now, need to understand that that you don't want to be in a toxic environment. But you don't want to be in a toxic environment. But you really need to be in like an environment where you have good energy and that propels you to that next level. And I think that's what you're talking about with Sosa. Could be about yeah, her yeah. comps. It's a little off topic. Cut me off if I'm taking too long. But I wanted to bounce off that Justin comment. It's so sad to see. And I I know he's been a pro forever. He's so many people's favorite pro. But to see Garrett put his heart out into every single one of these series, and then you just see Justin just laid off. Not <laughs> not saying a word. Like I I couldn't feel worse for a player. You it's so visibly obvious that Garrett once to like be the best in the world more than almost anyone. He cares so much. And to see a teammate kind of throw that away for him, not obviously not doubting Justin individually. He's one of the best players in the world. But just to see him throw that away for him is so sad. Okay, okay, okay. So you're saying so you're saying when you're watching him, when you're watching him, you just feel like Justin's just not like ensuing like any, anything. He's not mentally there. He don't want to be there. Okay, okay. Wow. I can I can see that just going off of his uh his camera, sometimes because so, sometimes some there are a few instances where he looks really energized and animated and they are like, they look unstoppable. They're electric. Yeah, yeah, they're and they look unstoppable. But there are other times like this, like this past weekend where he just didn't seem like he wanted to be out there, and I think that has a really big impact on their performance. What do you do when you go when you have something like that where you have like a person like on a team that just the energy is like low like they're a good player but like like well like what what, what do you kind of default to like are you like do you like work it out do you like talk to them or are you instantly like me and garrett are different i try to fix him if i can i leave i cannot deal with that i'd rather a worse teammate with a great mental than a great teammate with a bad mental it's kind of on season eight me miss gyro i cannot explain the mentality of that team it was horrible we were three extremely talented individual players and we were great with each other it was half of our scrims were canceled called early they were chalked before they even started uh it was just so bad so when mist was getting a c9 tryout and we were kind of talking to aj it was kind of obvious to me that aj didn't fit immediately like mist did but aj has one of the best mentalities in the pro scene he's a grinder he wants to improve and that's the perfect teammate for me. That's who I wanted on my team. It was sad that season nine didn't go the way we wanted. Uh, it was starting to get better in the off season, but 
I was getting offers to join teams that I thought were way above my pay grade. So it was kind of set out ended, but that's just how I feel. Mentality is everything. Uh, Raul? Well, I mean, in terms of like everything, because I don't think we like heard from you. I think I've always been like a bit big advocate for mentality. I think mentality just carries people a long way. Um, you, you just, the perfect example is Arsenal. Arsenal tweets right before, even, even being on the show right before the regional and tweeting right before he's like, I'm, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring everything I got. Right. And you could just hear the confidence in his voice. He's like, yo, if we show up with the play style we got, I'm confident we're going to go in this. We're going to be one of the top teams. We're going to win it. We're going to win the whole thing. They go, go into it. It brings the confidence into the next, into the next teammate. Right. And then that, that teammate hears the confidence out of his own teammate's mouth, you know, and then it goes into the next teammate. It's just spread across everything. And then you just have fun with it afterwards. Right. You have a teammate who's having fun. That energy from that teammate goes into another one. He starts having fun and then everybody's just in sync together, having fun. And that's what it's all about. Right. Having, enjoying the time you're playing in the game. If you're not having fun, if you don't feel good, you probably ain't playing good. You feel good, you play good. You, you play great. Yeah, it's it's the saying. It's so cliche, but it's it's true. It yeah. is true, that is and true. and that's what people don't understand. That's facts. I remember we were doing the field. It was me, Polly, and Rodis. And like Rodis, there was sometimes he wouldn't talk, and I was like, Rodis, I need you to talk. That's what be motivating me. I just, like, uh, you know, like, because obviously I'm not the best player in, in the game. I'm, you know, whatever. I, I got to constantly prove myself to everybody. It is what it is. But that being said, I still like to, like, do as much competition as I can because it's fun. And, but it's only fun if, like, you know, your team wants to play and wants to win. You know what I mean? If you're just in there all day and, you know, you're dealing with. I'm back. <laughs> I got boost. Oh, it's in my net. Oh. You got that? I'm so unlucky. Yeah. Uh, I, don't I don't know what else I could have done there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're, I mean, I, I mean, you if you gra- yeah, if you grab the boost. <laughs> oh, you didn't rotate back right there. Oh, no, I thought you'd be back. I thought you. I thought, yeah, I thought you. Yeah, my bad. I thought, Wait, I thought you, you should have been on backboard. It's cool. It's cool. Move on, Austin. <laughs> not Austin. Not Austin. But yeah, it's like you don't want to be there. No one wants to be there. So that's why mentality is important. Somebody got a bad mentality right now. Um, and it's scrub killer. We're gonna move on to our next topic. Uh, singularity ended up benching scrub killer. Uh. I call him Scrub Killer. Scrub Killer. But uh, yeah, this is something that, you know, kind of came out in the middle of the week was definitely pretty surprising. Uh, I, yeah, I don't I don't know. Like, obviously, the bitch God's movie, we, we've seen that happen like 15,000 times. But no, I don't think anyone really at, like thought Scrub Killer of all people would be benched. Uh, uh, like, Bates? Like, what are we thinking? Oh. We think it's something. Oh, there's a clip. There's a clip. Okay, well, we have a clip uh, of Scrub Killer. Let's let's just show you guys for the show. For the Rocket League World Championship Season 7, and congratulations to Scrub Killer, your MVP! Scrub, my man, you are now a champion and the most valuable player. This must be an insane day for you. Very good day, yeah. Very good day work. Okay, so that was a clip of Scrub Kelly getting the MVP after winning the world championship. And I I guess, you know, let me phrase this question a little bit a little bit better. What does this mean for, for Scrub Killer's career? Like, you know, Singular is not the best team in the world. Scrub Kelly gets benched off of this team. Does this hurt him in like in a big way? Like, what are we thinking? To me, to me, it's mind blowing. Uh I always hear a lot throughout the scene that Scrub prioritizes his content over his competitive uh, career. I mean, but I mean, even even then, I personally believe that he was prioritized. He was, was had content very foremost in his career at the time he was winning Finals MVP and a time where he almost won again because I I think he was genuinely the best player on Vitality. But this whole entire time he was on there, I, some people can dispute with me or that, but that's just the way I've viewed it. He impacted the game impacted the game in almost every single facet and single-handedly dominated. And and it's uh it's it's really sad that he's he's in this position that he's in right now because a lot of us used to especially me for I'm just talking from my perspective growing 
into the Rocket League and trying to get better at the game. I would watch Johnny Boy's dreams all the time. His 1v1 show match and his scrub kill was always there. He was the one who talked about who's going to be the prodigy that everybody's waiting on. The kid from Scotland, I believe. And and so uh, at, at this point, I'm, I don't really know the specifics as to why he's getting benched. I thought they were playing pretty decently at the moment. But I'm sure maybe Rettles or Raul or somebody from EU can give us a little more insight on this at right now or a later date. Yeah, uh, I can't say that much about Singularity. I can't say that I'm a massive fan of the team. Uh, I didn't didn't watch him as much as some people did. But Scrub has always had kind of mentality and ego problems. Uh, it was something that everyone was like, hey, he's young. He'll get over it eventually. He never got over it. He was season eight, best player at the event, easily. Worlds. We played them day three, and it was like, day three, Kate up, guy. watch out for day three, Kate up. No, day three, Scrub destroyed us. He was, by without Scrub on the field, without, with, just say, throw another Kate up in that roster, that is an easy series win for us. Scrub was, like he, he was unstoppable. And I think if they beat NRG in that game seven, he gets another MVP award. Right. Oh, but the, oh, but that gives that brings me back to my point I was making about G two. I think Vitality still would have replaced him if they would have won. You think, but that's what you're saying. Yeah, I think they would have too. They were really but set on like the. That's French different. They were, they were set that's on replacing him. Yeah, but but, but like, and, I mean that that's the same thing. They're set on replacing Drees after. Whatever are they? I don't think happened. they're set on replacing Drees. I don't well, they, think they're set on replacing. Didn't they say that? Is no, that not? Is no, that not nah. like? No, 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 no. They've never said that. I thought that he he was just like a time replacement. Like it, by by the time this split is over, is you know they were gonna find someone else. He just unless like I missed something. I don't think so. Yeah. I think I think I think it was kind it's of expected for G two, but he's playing really well. I yeah, mean, he's playing well. We'll see. Like maybe going into it, it was like he did, they didn't expect too too much on him. He's performing, and uh, it's just there. But I just want to touch on that real fast about Scrub getting replaced. Uh, y'all y'all can go before I go. Well, I think the biggest thing for me is like for Scrub, like we've seen how things like this you know affect someone's career, right? Like for example, Cronovi being dropped from Rogue, uh, just like older players who kind of had like the limelight. That's where I'm going with this, uh, where. You know, we see them in stardom. Everybody thinks they're really good, but they don't necessarily uh, get, like, after they're done with their top team, it's just like a downhill slope. And I think I'm a little bit concerned that that might be happening to Scrub. I mean, how do you guys feel about him individually? I know, like, some of you guys haven't watched a lot of Singularity, but, like, from the time when he was on Guild. Uh, it, or is this really just, it, does this go back to the mentality question that we just had? where is his mentality like that bad in terms of the game where that's what's really hurting him right now uh, I, like, I think scrub and cordova are completely different like downward slopes per se scrub's talented there's just no denying that scrub's talent is world class when as Ruddles would just point out he played him literally a year year and year and four months ago on the land stage he was the best player of the land with the land where Justin Reynolds, typical Arsenal, uh, Gary G, all the same people there. Astral back when he was balling out, uh, and he, he the talent is is unarguable. So it has to be something mentality or something along those lines. And you want to see him get on the right team again because I think the all the Rocket League scene benefits when Scrubs like on a great team because he provides content like Reynolds does. In a way, he talk he run he run he runs his mouth, but he backs it up. <laughs> and so uh and that's good that's a good it gets great energy and uh i don't know i would have to do like some way more in-depth interviews of eu players something like that to really get a understanding of why he's not because that's the thing why like, he's in this situation he's been in two different teams this season you know he started out on gill and everybody thought gill was like super hype gill had odd results there was talk of things going on and players not necessarily liking each other behind the scenes now Scrubs on Singularity. Singularity thought it was a great pickup. Everybody is super happy at first. Now he's in a sub spot. So, I don't know. But then there's the team that was supposed to happen. There's the, what was it? It was Ronicky, Scrub, and Itachi. Do you guys remember this? It was right before we, it was, it was announced on something. It was uh, that team. That I think that was kind of his last chance. I don't know. Last summer? It, 
it was right before season X. So yeah, like July, yeah, August, like summer. right before the deadline. I it was it talks might have been replacing one of Ronicky or Tachi, but it, it was a team that was like, wow, this team is going to be special. And I think that was kind of his last chance. I think everyone's seen him and everyone kind of overlooks him because of his mental. I think it's been probably five years since he's been in the scene and everyone's like, he'll he'll grow up eventually and he never grows up. He's always benched or kicked or something because of his personality and mentality issues. It's kind of like Bluey. Bluey yeah. is another great example. Yeah. Right? Bluey got kicked off his MVP season and not even really, he's trying to get back up there, but he just keeps getting the boot once he Dumpster. gets there yeah. and, and now like scrub he's not even like t base mentioned he wants to see him on another top team and that would be great because he brings content but and know, the skill yeah but there's a reason why he's not on it right now it, like he has that world-class skill but there's a clear reason why he's not on it and it's, it's, it's it is that mentality no one likes playing with him they, he probably has that like grouch attitude in scrims doesn't want to show up doesn't want to play do things like that and it's just harming the the team's um improvement areas so like there, there's a clear reason why he's not on a top three team in europe right now see you say it's clear but for me i don't know if it's clear i, I gotta interview fairy fairy or scrub or something we gotta get <laughs> scrub or fairy on the show i gotta know why exactly scrub kid was taken off of that team I, I gotta know <laughs> maybe, maybe, because that that just taking him off that team they didn't necessarily get better if anything they got worse and Alpha 54 is a great player. But they, but that, they got worse skill-wise. Like, they're not winning as much. You know what I'm saying? That's and, and, vitality? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and and so, like, like what pushes a team to, like, get rid of that talent? Like, like how badly was the situation? Oh, my gosh. It's so much. Because that changes, that changes his whole career. Yeah. Because he can still be on vitality and winning. I mean, well, we can ask later this question. It's later on PK. Right with Gyro and um, Gyro yes. missed. Right, mm -hmm. how often did you want to play the game? Never. Now, at, it now, was now, horrible. Yeah. So, so think of that like Scrub being on uh, Vitality, and one of those players just never wants to play the game because of the way another player is impacting them. You bye, can't bye. grow as a team. I mean, I mean, they're 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 still they just won worlds and they finished one go off a of okay, world. And, and if BDS now. Enters the scene, the BDS of now. First right? of all, I don't think BDS runs over Vitality with Scrub or Team because Scrub got that dog in him. I don't know about them other people on Vitality right now. Just, just for example, That's Vitality got reverse ago. swept. Vitality got reverse swept by BDS once again for like the sixth time today. I don't agree. It's such different times, ago. though. It's like that Vitality with Scrub was so good a year and five months ago, and now BDS is like there's like a nine month period where just no one knows what happens. So I don't know. It's kind of comparing two different eras it's weird yeah i mean i can go with that too i don't know i'm mean, we have to get a scrub on or something nah, well scrub, i need that scrub scrub has expressed interest before we were even on this channel about coming on the show so maybe we can make that happen i think so scrubbing uh, kate up yelling uh, at each other let's just uh, you know i want to keep the <laughs> show on the speaking <laughs> languages <laughs> with, uh, yo wait chill. Uh, yo man i don't understand no french out here no, i'm sorry <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do we could ever have Kate up on here? Bro? Yeah, oh, man, I, I, he definitely ain't gonna understand me. No chance. Yeah, yeah Kate up that me. strong Louisiana accent, never. Yeah. Hey, there's no way. <laughs> okay, we, we gonna have to have Kate up's questions written out beforehand, so he knows like he's gonna be full gonna translator in like the sixth <laughs> webcam. Right. Yeah. Oh my Louis goodness. Kitchen. Okay. Yeah, well, man. I mean, we'll see what happens with Singularity, but I think right now. Uh, we, we are coming into, you know, our final segment and we're going to go out through this one for uh, pretty much until we close. So for the next 15 minutes, we're talking about the European regional it is the EU spring regional three that is happening very soon. I know teams were qualifying and I think we actually have all of our teams. Yeah. So if you guys are unfamiliar, close qualifiers, uh, qualifying teams, Atlanti Wave, Endpoint, Wolves, Galaxy Racer, Train Hard, Howard. Dignitas and Illusion, which is formerly known as Triple Trouble. Um, they're going to be with uh, pretty much all the other teams that you guys know. Uh, the only other news that happened today was God's Midlist team was picked up by this score called BS Plus Competition. I, I'm going to, that's going to be interesting to see how that, how we end up saying the name on a broadcast because it's a BS and then plus. Maybe we just call them BS Plus. 
But a lot yeah, of can... stuff got announced today too, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they announced their like org that kind of picked Investment them up. Yeah, it was like group. It's thing. really weird. Yeah, it's, strange. Yeah, it, 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 it's really weird. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna show like some graphics too of everything that happened in the previous regional. But it, it, for me, if anything, uh, I want to know for you guys what you are expecting going into the final spring regional of uh, for Europe. Um, like every other tournament, I, I do expect BDS to win. Uh, I'm excited to see Team Queso again. Like I've expressed, I, I like this team a lot. I think their style of play is fun to watch. And I don't say that about many EU teams. Usually it's pretty boring, but Team Queso, they've got, they've got some spunk. And, uh, I want to see the team. I want to see that team at Worlds. I want, I want to play and scrim against those guys, but Regardless, I do think this is BDS's regional to lose, as all of them are, apparently, so. <laughs> uh, for, me, for me, it's like, I want to see if Solary can keep that consistency that they brought in from last regional. They, they placed second. Uh, Slater already touched on Queso, who, had, who won it, but um, another team I do want to see make another top eight is Team Liquid. We talk about Team Liquid. Uh, the notorious org that they are having these placements that we would expect um, a, like a no org a no org roster to have um, but now they're kind of stepping into their way and hopefully they get another top 8 placement I want to see the consistency from Team Liquid uh, I don't know like for example on that previous on that previous graphic they had a Team Queso ends up winning it, but they lost 3-0 to Liquid, which <laughs> which, which uh, shows that that region is very European death, dude. European no, 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 none of that, none of that. It just shows how inconsistent it is because then Team Queso is gonna catch a really hot streak. They're kind of like the KCP of NA. I mean, of EU, in my opinion, where if they get they catch, but they're better than KCP when at their peak, I would say. And so, and so when they're hot, they can really win it all. But for the most part, they're not going to perform at that level that they showed, that they showcased uh, the previous region. They're not, and I can back that up by saying they're not even in the grid. So uh, for for me, I, I don't really see them repeating again. And uh, it's going to have to fall on another team. And, I, and I'm going to have to wait in the BDS one because I got to really think about that for the next couple of minutes before I just say BDS is going to win again. I, I just, I don't know. I'm just... They always win, man. I'm just about, I'm just about competition. What, what, what do you think about your boys at Howard? Howard. Howard? Did Howard make the regional? Yeah, I think so. If Howard made the regional, yeah, I mean, in there. I mean yeah. Howard, like I said, is the only team in the world who has a 100% win rate against BDS. <laughs> and if BDS sees Howard, I think BDS knows what's coming for. So, so that's why that's why I gotta wait and, wait to see what the brackets are looking like, what the groups look like, because if Howard BDS match up, Michael might go badly for BDS. So I'm just gonna outright pick BDS off it. And also going off this bracket we're seeing on on this, the screen right now, mm -hmm. how many of these teams are in the top eight for you? Atlanta uh, Wave. All of them, but Atlanta Wave, White Demons, and Ricks. Right. That's right. Yeah. No, so Liquid's sorry. not top eight either. No, oh, I didn't see Liquid. Yeah, and Liquid. Wow. That's right. That's four. four. So they have four of the top. Never and at, and at name, that but... time, Solary and Team Queso were both set in like nine. I'm pretty sure. Cause, yeah. Gil Cause Guild and Galaxy Racer, oh Guild and Endpoint were definitely ahead of both of them at that point in time. Wasn't Galaxy Racer like six? And Galaxy Racer might even have been six. So that that just shows that that region is all over the place. Besides BDS and sometimes Vitality, everybody else is just you don't really like. I don't know. You don't see too much out of them. You know what I'm saying? You don't really expect too much out of them. Because I know personally speaking, when I watch Top Bugs beat BDS, I figured that Top Bugs weren't going to win. I just Jeez. felt like they, I felt like whoever they played next round, they're going to lose to. Yeah, it was just all luck. Pretty much. A lot of not, luck. Not luck. Yeah, they got a little fortunate. Like, they played well, but BDS played bad. And I think I talked about that on, on BDS. Yeah, on that. yeah, that entire BDS segment where BDS were just missing nests that they're just not missing yeah. again. <laughs> so, so, for, so, for me, I mean... It's just an interesting region for the most part. Reynolds, how much European Rocket League do you watch? Quite a bit. Okay. Uh, do you think BDS is the best team in the world? No. 
Okay. I think they are one of the best teams in the world. I think they are on the same level as us, Energy, and Envy. I think those are the four best teams in the world, but I don't think they're the best. Okay. You know, we got to ask everybody that comes on the show. We got to ask everybody. Right. Uh, also, since you do watch enough EU, Team Queso. Uh, team Queso is a team that actually, there was a recent interview. Uh, Rams uh, talked about their play style, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But uh, do we think that Team Queso is going to have a repeat performance from, from the last regional? Or was it just a one-off? Uh, I kind of agree with the T-Bates where they kind of are like KCP. It's like they're either really good or really bad. And sadly, I don't think their play style is sustainable. It looks a little too fast for what they can handle. I would love for them to repeat. I like that team. I like those guys a lot. I like the way they play. I don't see it happening. Yeah. I felt like they caught heat. So like, do you see the Mensa right here? This This is such a smooth transition from the wall into the shot and it's just mm -hmm. like that's hard to stop they're nice but but like then you just watch some of their defensive mistakes and their errors and you're like what am i watching <laughs> right and that can say and this not being able to be consistent on defense alone isn't the way to go and they can lose to a bubble team in eu especially how much people talk about that depth in eu they can lose to that <laughs> so uh i mean I'm not really confident on them repeating, but they've always got a chance because I, I'm with Slater in the whole entire way. They're the closest approximation to NA team that EU has. Agreed. I mean, we talk about having a repeat performance. What, what does that mean? That means consistency. And in Europe, you don't have none of that. So I can't even back up <laughs> having a repeat performance from anybody except BDS. So right. uh, I just, I, I don't know. I'm questioning that. Yeah, I was uh, scrolling through Reddit during uh while we were looking at the segment and, or actually before the show started i saw this and uh rams was talking about how like the the highlight of the article posted on reddit is he thinks team Caso's play style is kind of the future of rocket league like if they clean up their defense then uh the way that they play is uh, the, like that aggression is um so srg style is the future of rocket league glad yeah, rams well, pointed that out north america figured out that was the future of rocket league about a year and a half ago. About a year and a half and, ago. And in Europe still hasn't figured that out. That's why yep. they're not going to be able to, other than BDS, because they just have so much talent. Monkey Moon is one of the smartest people to play Rocket League. It's just going to be evident at land that they're just playing way too slow. I don't know why he said, like, that's the future of Rocket League. Didn't we watch D2 dominate? We've known this. We, for, no, yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, North that's what I'm saying. Like, North America's so been there. Ago. And SRG's been there, too. Sam Rock Gaming. Just like, man, you know, and you and Sand Rock. Man, come on now. <laughs> Have you seen Sand Rock versus Falcons? Oh, you missed it too. T Base talked to Johnny Boy over the weekend, man. <laughs> and he was just like, he gassed the T Base opinion up, bro. T Base never go back down from that. Oh, no. That's right. Man, I got Johnny Boy behind me. I know I'm good. <laughs> that's all I got to say. Oh, no. Now, that's a discussion for another day. That's true. That is true. Uh, moving on back to for more Europe. Uh, we, we do want to do like a quick head to head between these two teams, Dignitas or Solary. Will either team make that final jump? Wait, either make... team level up. <laughs> oh, level up. Oh, my bad. Oh, no, no, I'm I think just... I typed that wrong. My bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm reading with T Base row here. Um, which one is it, T Base? Level up? We, we leveling up? It don't matter. It's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> level okay. up's funny. That's uh, all I need. Hmm, I'll, I'll go. Dignitas or Solary? Honestly, I feel like Solary have been playing a lot better. Obviously, you know, they had a good regional last time. Um, Dignitas has always been a team that's like on the cusp, and I think everybody wants to see Dignitas do well. But I feel like Solary's there. Like, they're finally playing, I think, how people wanted them to play, like, since the beginning. So for me, like, if I had to pick between them, I'd pick Solary. Okay. I Bro, think I, I, I want to go, actually, because I think I disagree. I think Dignitas is the the younger of the team. I think they're the hungrier team. I don't like Astral's mentality at all. Fair I like, enough. I love Farah's mentality. Farah is actually someone I looked up to coming up. But I think Dignitas is super hungry. I like apparently Jack and Joru's as the young, playmaking, mechanical youngsters. And I love Violent Panda's kind of older leadership, kind of just forming them into the players that he wants them to be. And so I'm going to go with Dignitas. 
I think I'm gonna have to agree with Slater. I think um, the biggest thing that we've been preaching pr- pretty much this whole episode is mentality. And like he said, Astro's mentality is in the gutter. Like you can see that Astro wants to win, but I don't think he approaches it the right way. And um, that's kind of what harms them. But when they're on top, they're on top, right? Everything's fine. But I mean, it's when you have those struggling moments that Astro starts to dip. And it, uh, the game, the, the gameplay from the whole team starts to dip with it. And um, that's something you don't see from, you, you see from Dignitas, but at the same time, they're a young squad with a lot more potential, I feel like, as a roster. Um, Jack, Joros, yeah, those are the guys you, everyone always talks about their highlight plays. I think that at any given moment, they just pull it out and they can do it. So um, I think that's the roster that is going to level up, if any. Level up. I like level up. But, uh, all y'all talking about potential and all that that's great at all and i like i'm a i've been big on dick toss this whole time since january but right now we are in april about midway through april worlds are coming up we got major too and um you ain't really got too much time to worry about potential right now potential we can talk about potential for all cs whatever they call it coming in august september october whatever that happens if it happens but, but for now we got to talk about production and uh solar has the better peak at the moment so i'm gonna go with solar because I think that they're really close to really hitting that next level and getting to that about top three, top four, legit solidified position in the EU. What do you think they need for their next level? What? Which one? Solar. Solar rate? Well, they need Astral to be, uh, have a better mentality, as you touched on. But also, also they need like a consistent offensive scheme. They, they have a, they rely on Astral a lot, like a lot. And when he's going, when he's going to work, they. They they make it as far as they I think all the way to grand finals. But when he's not like clicking and Charles said and Farrah have to put in a little bit more like energy and uh try to exploit the defense more on their own, it doesn't work out. So if Charles set or Farrah, just one of them, they don't need both of them, just one of them to really take take that step to the next level. Charles said maybe go back to his ground dribble like he used to a, a little bit more, try to utilize that, like play his game and uh open up Astral and get and take some of that pressure off him. I think that'll bring them closer to where they want to be and it, and that's easier to do than dignitas at the moment just to play devil's advocate um so you're depending on astral's mentality which hasn't been good his entire career you're depending on farah who considered by pros community figures and people just watching someone who hasn't improved in the entire time he's been in the game mostly and you're depending on the ground game of someone who peaked <laughs> At July 2019, <laughs> almost two years ago, at DreamHack Valencia, and hasn't been the same player since. Time out, time out, time out, time yeah. out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. I'm going to come right back to you. Because, see, there's a re- like, the reason I say that, because Dignitas has every bit as much work to do. Jory is, we all see what he could do in the 1v1. See, we seen all Johnny Boy channel. He looks dominant. Does he look like the same player in, in uh, threes? No. I think Dignitas has far less work to do than Solari does to become a top six team, or consistently top six. Hi, how so? It's no secret their mentality is good. Panda is the him and Garrett are the two best leaders in Rocket League history. Uh-huh. I think Jack is there. I think Jack and Joru's both as a duo up top is skill crazy. Wise? Right. Yes, skill wise, and I am hundred percent taking Joru's Jack and Panda over Farish, I'll set and Astral, mentality and skill-wise. For the next month or for or for the future? For, for the both. future, I'm with you. For both. 2019, so I, yeah, I take Solary, but no, not anymore. It's. I, I just don't – I watch Jorius, and he just, he just needs a little bit more fine-tuning. He needs to he needs to find his game. What you know does Farah need then? Okay, oh, they're talking about, we're not talking about potential. We all know Farah ain't on, ain't on Jorius or apparently Jack's level in terms of skill. But I'm, but I'm saying that – for for them, it's like first game. You know, first game came to the league. It took him a little while to get get his training wheels off, to get like really cozy into the league. And now he's first game. It took him a little while to get teammates that could back him up. Okay, that's that's fa- that's fair too. <laughs> he always had talent. That's fair. T- okay, but he, okay, he was the first killer <laughs> though. Was he first? Was he Jason? He was not first killer. Okay, exactly. And Jorius and once is Jory us, and Jack and once is apparently Jack. You know who they are. They are not that same player in threes yet. Okay. They need a little bit more time. And that's why that's why I got solo right now. I'm with you 100%. I believe that Denny Toss, really, if I could pick a team going into the next season, I believe Denny Toss would win it all. I'm just letting you know. I just think Jorius would be unstoppable at that moment. I'm, I'm just telling you right now. But it that's all? just me. It all. And, and, and all just of going, off, going off of potential. Oh. And if they put in the time, you watch Jorius in three in the one we scene, he looks like the most unstoppable player. <laughs> and if that ever happens in, in threes, it's raps. It's raps. But I don't think it's going to happen the next month. 
That's when oh. we set pick Solary. I think we might have oh. ran out of time. Yeah, we yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so caught up in the convo. I was so caught up in the convo. Yeah, we're we're pretty close to time. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll do this yes or no real quick. BDS and Vitality off weekend or is it a sign for more? Off weekend. Off weekend. Off weekend. Off weekend. Okay, we're all cool with that. Off quick. weekend. Sheesh. My goodness, there was so much more we wanted to do. We wanted to have like predictions and stuff, but we had rattles on, and I honestly was—I think I had an off day today because I was just completely all over the place. <laughs> but um, besides that, rattles, thank you so much for coming on the show. Obviously, EU Regional is going to be this weekend, so please make sure to watch the EU Regional. Let us know if you think we're right or wrong on some of these calls that we've had. Again, biggest thing too between that that last talk, uh, which is also why we stayed on it. Queso, Dignitas, Solary, and even Guild, you could say, are about 100 points off from each other. And Endpoint Galaxy is close to. Yeah, Endpoint at 1550. So that's why this regional is so important. It's going to be the last one until teams qualify for the major. So you want to see which one of those teams comes out. But that being said, we are all out of time for first touch. The, um, before I, I close out, gentlemen, we'll start with Rettles, Bates, Diz. Any, any final thoughts? Any shout outs? I am just happy that you guys brought me on the show, and I'm excited for Dignitas to prove T-Bates wrong. Dignitas, I love y'all. Slater, I don't know how you have my head like that. I appreciate you having on my, the show, my brother. Of course. Yeah, I just appreciate you hopping onto the show, Slater. It was good seeing you. Always. Yeah, so obviously shout out Rettles, shout out T-Bates, shout out Roldish. You can follow them on Twitter. You see their ads below. Shout out Austin. Shout out everybody behind the scenes <laughs> helping us out. Uh, Koji especially, hey, Coach. you know, keeping us on track. Shout out Psyonix for supporting the show, of course. Uh, again, uh, and thank you all for you guys who have been watching for today. If you didn't get your drops, you're going to have to come back next week. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that being said, that is going to be it for us for First Touch. We will be back next Monday to talk about some more Rocket League. Until then, we'll see you. Austin!